Think about this. Netflix doesn't crash when a new show drops. Google stays fast even during global outages and Amazon delivers 24/7. So, how do they keep the systems running which includes massive cloud platforms, complex Kubernetes clusters or even servers running smoothly and stay healthy, fast and secure all day and every day? The secret is first thing is of course brilliant engineers and robust systems and workflows. But there's one tool working behind the scenes that makes it easier to manage the workflows. Yep, you guessed it right. Prometheus, the go-to monitoring tool. Because here's the thing: without monitoring tools, you are blind to crashes, slowdowns, errors, or memory running out until it hits the performance of your app. Monitoring tools help you see exactly what's happening inside your servers, containers, and cloud apps in real time with full control. They help you track system health, performance, and send alerts. before things break and prometheus it's one of the best in the game so if you want to learn about how prometheus collects metrics triggers alerts and help engineers sleep peacefully you are in the right place before moving forward on how prometheus works let's understand what prometheus is and why it is needed for that let's take a scenario here suppose you are running a high traffic e-commerce website with multiple services like a user authentication service a product catalog payment processing and order management where each service is running on different different servers and they all work together to keep your website running smoothly but one day users start complaining that the site is slow orders are taking forever to complete and even some payments are failing now without a monitoring tool you are stuck guessing what's wrong is the payment service down is the product catalog slowed down is any server overloaded now manually checking each service is time consuming and frustrating right but that's where prometheus comes in prometheus continuously monitors your infrastructure and checks the health of your systems it keeps an eye on every service server and application you have by constantly collecting data like cpu usage memory consumption response times error rates and more so instead of guessing you can simply check prometheus dashboards like if you want to see that the payment service has high error rates you know where to start then you notice the product catalog server is running out of memory the problem is identified immediately or suppose you got the spike in response time for the order management you already got your next clue to resolve that as well now you know where the issues are and you even have the data regarding them so this is how prometheus helps you fix the issues fast before even users notice so what exactly is prometheus so prometheus is a powerful open source metric based monitoring system designed for collecting storing and analyzing data for your infrastructure in real time to keep your services and systems healthy and running smoothly prometheus is written in the go programming language and it's hosted by the cloud native computing foundation under an open governance Originally it was built to tackle the complexity of dynamic container environments like Kubernetes, Docker Swarm and microservices. But that's not all. It's just as effective for traditional infrastructure as well. Seamlessly monitoring bare metal servers, virtual machines and directly deployable applications. To understand it in a simpler terms, think of Prometheus like a reporter with a notebook where on every 15 seconds it goes up to every machine in your system and asks, "Hey, How's your CPU doing? Any errors? Is the memory okay? Then logs every answer neatly time stamped so that later when you ask a question like how many requests failed in the last 5 minutes, it flips through the notebook and gives you the answer instantly. Now let's see how Prometheus actually works behind the scenes. But to truly understand Prometheus, you first need to understand its architecture. So Prometheus is built on a modular architecture which means each component has a specific role but can work independently. Prometheus is built around a central component called as Prometheus server which is the brain of entire monitoring system. You can have one or as many Prometheus servers as you need depending on the needs and the size of your organization. And this server has three main components that make everything happen smoothly. The core components of the Prometheus are the first is time series database that is the storage engine so at the heart of the prometheus we have the time series database this is where all the collected metrics data is stored think of it as a massive logbook where the prometheus keeps track of every metric it collects but what makes it unique is that it uses a time series data model to store the collected metrics time series are numeric values recorded over time 
each associated with the timestamp and a label set. Usually, whenever Prometheus pulls metrics from the target, every 15 seconds, Prometheus pulls fresh values and appends them to the next time series. This structure makes it easy to track trends, spikes, and patterns in your systems. Now, if you're monitoring an HTTP server, a time series could look like this. The next one we have is Data Retrieval Worker, which works as a metric scraper and is responsible for pulling or scraping metrics data from a list of defined and monitored targets. So these targets can either be your own services and apps that you can directly track with Prometheus metrics. So how the scraping works is, Prometheus follows a pull-based model, meaning it doesn't wait for data to come to it. Instead, it actively goes out and collects it. And to make that happen, Prometheus sends an HTTP request to each target's metric endpoints, typically known as slash metrics. If the target responds with a list of metrics in a text-based format, Prometheus reads and stores this data in the TSDB, that is time series database. Like for an example, for a Linux server, the target might expose CPU, memory, and the disk usage metrics at this endpoint. Finally, the third key component of Prometheus server is the HTTP or web server. This is how you interact with the Prometheus querying the collected metrics data using PromQL, PromQL that is Prometheus query language, where you can access a built-in web UI to view metrics or to connect it to the external dashboarding tools like Grafana for rich visualizations. Like suppose you want to see your application's request rate. You can simply use this PromQL query to fetch the data regarding it. Also, as I mentioned, you can build custom dashboards with Grafana to display this data in the real time. So now what is PromQL? If you're wondering what is PromQL, well, don't worry, we'll see this in the further topics. Now let's quickly see how this architecture actually works together. So in the center of it all, it has the Prometheus server. This is the brain of entire system and it is made up of three parts. So the first is time series database. This is where all your metrics are stored. Think of it like a logbook of values such as CPU usage, memory consumption, request counts or exceptions tracked over the time. The next is data retrieval worker. This component is responsible for pulling the data. It goes out to the different services, apps, servers or targets you are monitoring, fetches the metrics from them and stores those in the TSDB that is time series database. And finally, the web server acts like a user facing layer which lets you run PromQL queries on the stored data and visualize it on a dashboard. All right, moving forward, let's see what exactly Prometheus monitors. Well, it's the targets and metrics. So targets are the system, services, or applications that Prometheus monitors. They could be anything from a Linux server, a MySQL database, an Apache server, an HTTP endpoint, or even a Kubernetes cluster. While metrics are the actual values that Prometheus tracks for each target, and certain examples of the metrics are CPU usage, memory usage, HTTP request, database query time. And for the metric types in Prometheus, it defines four main types of metrics. First is counter, a value that only ever goes up, like the number of requests processed until now. Second is gauge, a value that can go up or down, like a CPU usage. The third is histogram, that can measure the distribution of values like request durations. And the fourth is summary, which is similar to a histogram, but focuses mainly on pre-calculated quantities. Now let's see about how Prometheus gets this data. Unlike tools like CloudWatch or New Relic that uses a push model where each service has to push data to a central server, Prometheus here does something different. It uses the pull-based model which has three big benefits. The first is lower infrastructure load which means no constant pushing from all services. Prometheus fetches only what is needed and when it is needed. The second is built-in health checks. Where suppose if a service doesn't respond to the pull, Prometheus knows that the service is down. In a push model, silence could also mean network failure but not necessarily a dead service. And the third is simpler architecture where there is no need for agents or daemons on every machine. Just expose the endpoint and you're set. But now wait, there is one exception to this pull model and that's for short-lived jobs. Now by this, what I mean is, think of a bad job or a cron job that spins off briefly, does its work, and exits before Prometheus has time to scrape it. For the cases like this, Prometheus offers a component called Push Gateway. These short-lived jobs can push their metrics to the Push Gateway, which stores them temporarily and makes them available for Prometheus to scrape. But remember, Push Gateway is an exception, not the rule.
It is only for those short-lived job scenarios. But now here's the thing. Not every system exposes Prometheus metrics by default or easily. And this is where exporters come in. Exporters are lightweight small programs that collect metrics from a target system and expose them in a Prometheus compatible format. They act as a bridge between Prometheus and non-native targets. Some of the popular exporters are The first is Node Exporter for monitoring Linux system metrics like CPU, memory usage, disk usage, etc. The second is MySQL Exporter which is used for tracking MySQL database metrics. The third one is Black Box Exporter which is used for monitoring HTTP and HTTPS endpoints. And the fourth is Cloud Exporters which is used for monitoring cloud services like AWS, Azure or GCP. Let's take an example of a node exporter. Now, if you want to monitor a Linux server, you can run node exporter on that server. It collects system metrics like CPU, memory, and disk usage and exposes them at slash metrics endpoint where Prometheus can then scrap this endpoint to collect those metrics regarding the Linux server. Now, in modern environment like Kubernetes or cloud platforms, services can scale up dynamically and that's where Prometheus can automatically discover targets using the service discovery mechanism. So how this is works is Prometheus can use or connect to different service discovery providers such as first is DNS discovery which is used for cloud services with dynamic IPs. The second is Kubernetes API which is used for discovering all pods in a cluster. Third is Cloud API which is used for AWS, Azure or GCP services. And the fourth is File Based Discovery System which is used for reading a list of targets from a file. Let's take an example of Kubernetes Discovery. You can configure Prometheus to automatically detect all the pods in a Kubernetes namespace and monitor them without any manual configuration. Now if a new pod is created, Prometheus starts monitoring it instantly without any manual configuration. We all know monitoring is useless without alerts, right? And that's where alerting system comes in. Prometheus has a component called Alert Manager that is responsible for firing alerts via different channels. Alerts in Prometheus are defined using alerting rules like triggering an alert when CPU usage goes above 80%. If a pod hasn't responded in 2 minutes, trigger a warning. So this is how it works. So the Prometheus server will read the alert rules and if the condition in the rules is met, an alert gets fired instantly through that configured channel. And these alerts are sent to Alert Manager which handles alert routing, deduplication and notifications through the notification channels like email, slack, pager duty and much more. Now the question is, who receives these alerts? Or like where does Prometheus store all this data that it collects and then aggregates? And how can other systems access this data? So as we learned earlier, Prometheus stores metrics locally in the time series database, but it can also send this data to remote storage locations or systems for long-term storage or advanced analytics. Some of the popular remote storage options include Thanos, Cortex or InfluxDB. So now that you have collected the metrics, set up the alerts, now what? Visualizing them. Prometheus has a basic web UI for direct metric queries using PromQL. But for beautiful dashboards, you can integrate Prometheus with Grafana. In Grafana, you can build dynamic dashboards with graphs, tables, and alerts. As we discussed earlier, we will discuss PromQL in detail, right? So PromQL, that is Prometheus query language, is how it works now. So Prometheus also lets you query the metrics data on targets through its server API using the Prometheus query language, that is PromQL. You can use the Prometheus dashboard UI to ask the Prometheus server via PromQL to show the status of a particular target or you can even use more powerful data visualization tools like Grafana which behind the scenes also uses PromQL to get the data out of the Prometheus. This one here basically queries all HTTP status codes expect the ones in the 400 range and this one does a sub query on that for a period of time like 30 minutes. So now how does Prometheus know what to scrape and when? Well, that is configured in the prometheus.yaml configuration file where you can define which targets Prometheus should scrape and at what interval. Prometheus can use a service discovery mechanism to find those target endpoints. Like when you first download and install Prometheus, you will see the sample config file with some default values in it. So here's a quick example of a Prometheus config file. And how it works is, the global config defines how the Prometheus scripts targets, that is example every 10 seconds, where you can overwrite script intervals per job if needed. The rule file section defines alerting and recording rules. And finally, the script config section is where you list all the jobs and their targets. So here's how it all works together entirely. 
Initially, you define the targets you want to monitor, like servers, applications, or cloud services. Then Prometheus uses its data retrieval worker to scrape those metrics from those targets at regular intervals. Now, these metrics are stored in time series database. Further, you can query this data using PromQL in the built-in web UI or visualize it with Grafana. And for non-native systems, you can even use exporters to translate metrics. Now, Prometheus can even automatically discover new targets using the service discovery. And if you want long-term storage, you can send those metrics to a remote storage system. And that's how Prometheus works, a modular, powerful, scalable, and a flexible monitoring system perfect for cloud native environments. From its modular architecture to how it collects, stores, sets up alerts, and visualizes metrics, you know now how it all fits together. So if you found this video helpful, give it a like, subscribe for more content like this, and let me know in the comments what you would like to learn next. See you in the next video.